What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Goliath Burrito, Forbidden Fan 12, Steven Stanton, Kent 9 Dave 69, Saturn Coon, Fish Cake, Nicholas A. Montgomery, Tat Cap, Johann Stenfeld, Anthony, Russell Kanai Uyker, Luis A. Sandoval, Samaran 1, Shane Lindroth, Firefox 2590, Crispy Bacon, D, Evo, Jasmine Tayer Studley, Scav King, Zombie, Stinging Shadow, Cursing Throne 92, Jacobus 92, Owen, The One Who Crawls, Cesar Valentin, Joshua Susick, Travis Tennant, Malik, JPC2, Jacob W, Alex Cole, Joshua Wire, Malik Black, Kiki, and as always, I want to give a shout out to our executive producers, Bevan Brummett and Vincenzo. Thank you all very much for your support. If you want to become a YouTube member, click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button down below. And if you wish to become a Patreon supporter, click the link in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. You just grabbed an instructional video. Hold it tight. Hey, Chad, look, it's you. Wow. Yeah, some people can get really, really angry. Really fast. <laughs> Twelve seconds later. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 my God. Help, Chad, help me. It's been some time since I've been involved in any kind of relationship. And that's because of me focusing on YouTube and also focusing on, uh, just, I don't know. When you dive yourself into work so much that it literally takes away from everything else, I, it, it's been difficult for me to maintain, like, like regular family functions with, like, my, my mom, my dad, uh, my sister, like, all my extended family, and also, you know, friendships and everything, and also trying to expand the channel and trying to expand it just <sighs> I don't know it's just been a long time since I've been in a proper relationship and honestly maybe that's for the best because I, I think if in my current state I were to try and be in a relationship it would be irritating to the point of nauseating for, for certain women out there. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it all depends, guys. That I I really wish, really wish that I could uh, be a part of someone's life, but it's just not in the cards right now. So, yeah, I, I was going to say, the oddest girlfriend, like, okay, in, in terms of, like, the subject matter of the video... My girlfriend is kind of odd by the odd ones out. So, yeah, he, here's my whole thing with, like, the weirdest girlfriend that I, like, okay, the weirdest girlfriend experiences I've ever had. I'll give you, uh, top two. Top two. I don't really feel like going any further back than that in my relationship life is, it. so, uh, the second weirdest, second weirdest, uh, experience it wasn't so much that my girlfriend was weird. It was the fact that her father was a gigantic, gaping butthole of a human being. Um, <laughs> I remembered. I remember vividly when I showed up to their house. When I when I showed up to their house, you know, I thought hey, everything was gonna be good. I walk in the door, and the dad is like staring daggers at me. At first, he was smiling. At first, he was like. But then as soon as he saw me, his face went from this to just a sneer, just like an angry sneer. And I was like, ooh, like what did I do? And yeah, basically, I'm not going to say he sabotaged our relationship, but he sure as hell wasn't encouraging to his daughter who, you know, she loved her father. She idolized her dad. Her dad was, you know, 25 year, like, 25-year uh, veteran of uh, the U.S. Army. You know, as far as I'd heard, stand-up guy, just straight-up, just aces of a human being. 
Uh, it's just he didn't like me dating his daughter. And he pretty much told me straight up why that what? Well, he didn't come out and straight up say it. Uh, he said uh, the primary reason why he didn't like the fact that I was dating his daughter was because I wasn't black or Hispanic. See, uh, <laughs> he he was a black man and his wife was, uh, was a Latina from Colombia. And uh, yeah, basically, he didn't like the fact that his daughter was dating was dating me. So, uh, yeah, it just goes to show you, I guess, you know, it just <laughs> comes in all shades, doesn't it? Uh, ha- uh, hate and misunderstandings. So, <laughs> um, uh, the number one weirdest one, uh, this one, this one, you know, has a little bit more of a happier ending. Um, so I'm sitting there, uh, we're both at dinner. Uh, we'd been dating for about, I'd say four, four or five months, but we were both just sitting there at dinner, uh, at a place that we, uh, we actually met working there and, um, you know, I'd since moved on to another job, but she still worked there. So we were able to eat there for a bit of a discount. But anyway, I show up there and, uh, you know, we're sitting there, we're eating and everything, everything's going all well and good. But then she looks at me from across the table and she basically just says, Nate, there's something I have to tell you. I'm like, what's up? She looks me right in the face and she says, Nate, you're too good of a guy for me to lead on or anything like that. And I'm like, what's wrong? And she just basically just says, I've been seeing someone else. And then she's, and then all of a sudden, like, my brain's just like, wait, what? And then you know we're sitting there you know the whole like it goes awkward for a little bit and then all of a sudden I just you know after a little bit I'm just like do I know him and then she just goes yeah remember I I don't want to name names like remember Stephanie from my uh, gymnastics class and I'm like yeah Huh? And she and uh, and she's just like, yeah. Uh, one day after class, we just went up to her dorm room. We were just we were just like sitting around talking, and then it just happened. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, and she's like, I I don't want I don't want you to think it was anything you did or anything. I'm like I'm just like I, I'm. I, me, I, I, when I was younger, I didn't fully, like, grasp the situation at hand. All my degenerate little brain was thinking, you know, the little red light going on in the back of my head, you know, the potential of a, potential of a, uh, of a triple intertwining. <laughs> little menage, but nah, <laughs> wasn't happening. I wasn't one to press on that, and she, she basically just broke it off with me right then and there. And, uh, from what I understand, they're still together, so, aces, happy for them. But... Yeah, like I said, it had a little bit of a happier ending, but for me, you know, it, it, I guess it was just her discovering who she was. I, I'm not going to pretend like I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to pretend like, you know, I, I was just like, oh, oh, I'm completely, like me, I was just taken off guard by it, but I wasn't going to like act like an ass about it or anything like that. I, I'd only been dating this girl for like four months and while I was, I was starting to develop feelings, it was just, eh, just wasn't meant to be, but yeah, those are the two weirdest uh, interactions I've ever had with a girlfriend. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Um, now that I'm older, I maybe I will handle it better. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me go ahead and uh, get the uh, video up on screen. This is the odd ones out. Uh, my girlfriend is kind of odd. So here we go. You know how when people get into a new relationship, they go through a honeymoon phase? Well, me and my girlfriend Ooh. went through a is the person I'm dating a deranged murderer phase. When she first came over to my house, she thought my Nintendo figure collection was something only a psychopath would have. And she's right. When you've been living (laughs) alone for so long, sometimes you just need to buy friends and put them on display. And sometimes you do this by turning people into lampshades or chairs. (laughs) Luckily, I just collect hunky reptile figures. Gif doesn't actually think I'm a psychopath anymore which is good you know because i don't want anyone to know the truth 
However, early on in our relationship, there were some things I did that she didn't like. Like one time I was unloading the dishwasher and I was putting away the knives and Gif looked at me all concerned and I asked, What's the matter, huh? Huh? I don't know what made her run to the other side of the room like that when I could clearly just throw the knife at her. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of stupid. But she definitely got her point across that she didn't like me holding multiple knives and told me to cut it out. But I didn't know Jesus. if she was a psychopath either though, because there were definitely some things about her that made me question her sanity. Like how she owns a $2,000 animal mascot costume, but she hates sports. That's weird. One time when I was over at her apartment, I was looking through her freezer, assuming she had bagel bites, and I asked, Hey babe, uh, where's all the bagel bites? And there was this plastic grocery bag in there, and she tells me, No, 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 don't look in there! Uh, we don't have any bagel bites. You ate them all, remember? But in my mind, all I'm thinking is, Hold on. What the frick does this chick have in her freezer that she doesn't want me to see? A freezer is not a place where you tell someone, don't look in there. You say that about underwear drawers and toilets. That's it. I don't know what we did for the next 10 minutes, because yeah. all I was thinking about was how many severed hands were in Gift's freezer. But then I thought, okay, maybe I'm overreacting. I optimistically asked, hey, um, babe, are you, um, perhaps keeping a surprise for me in the freezer? Like a birthday cake? My birthday's not for another five months, but that's the only thing I could think a person would hide in a freezer <laughs> that wouldn't make them a psychopath. And she said, nope. Nope. So what's in there? Don't worry about it. Do you not see how this looks? If the doors weren't locked, I would have been out of there. I wasn't about to lose sleep over this, so I held up the knife I had from the previous joke and said, what's in the freezer? And she went, it's a dead snake. You had a dead snake next to the bagel bites! So fun fact about my gif, she owns eight snakes. Mm-hmm. Apparently she used to own nine. I've learned that snakes oh. are a very low maintenance pet. You only have to feed them once every three years. And if you cut them in half, they turn into two snakes. Yeah, so I have no uh. clue how one of her snakes could have died. And another fun fact, snakes lack the part of the brain that feels love. They're physically incapable of showing affection. So your pet <laughs> hot nose would sell your soul to snake Satan for one dead mouse. So she already has eight pets that don't love her and potentially her boyfriend too if she doesn't get rid of that freezer snake. At least my reptiles aren't dead in a freezer. I immediately start asking questions. Why do you have a dead snake in your freezer? How many other dead animals are in your freezer? What the heck's wrong with you? And she said, I wanted to get him taxidermied, but the person I wanted to have do it was busy. Also, there's dead rats in there for my snakes. Oh, that explains why the bagel bites tasted so funny. What's extremely gross is that the snake is- Quinn used to have a snake. I remember when uh, Quinn used to live, we used to live in the same house. And I remembered uh, for a little bit, Quinn had one called Ellie, and uh, it was a sweet little snake, sweet little bit, little doe-eyed snake. It was so cute. And I remembered the freezer in the kitchen had this little canopy thing at the top, at the little, at the uh, top part of the freezer, at the at the very front of it, and in there was all these little things just scattered around. I'm just like, hmm. What are these? I look, and it's like, dead mouse. Hmm. That's, um... It's gotta be for the snake. I hope that's for the snake. If that's not for the snake, then, um... Uh, probably dealing with a psychopath for a, for, for a uh, roommate. <laughs> but I know, no, no. Quinn clarified with me as soon as, as soon as they brought Ellie into the fold... Uh, all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, yeah, this is uh, this is 100% a uh, this is 100% a, uh, a thing for the snake. So yeah, it <laughs> uh, Ellie was a sweet baby though. It's still in there to this day. I don't know how long the snake was in there before, but it's been well over a year since that incident. It's honestly great though because now she can never Gems. complain about the state of my refrigerator. I'll have potatoes that are sprouting more potatoes, grapes that are getting me tipsy, and if she points any of it out, I just respond with, oh, you think my refrigerator's disgusting? Yeah, Medusa, uh-huh. One time she said, ah, my fridge smells terrible and I don't know why. Really? You can't think of a single reason? She said, no, I said the fridge smells bad, not the freezer. I said, I will flush your snake down the toilet and give you a swirly. Now that's the sign of true love, kids. But for all I know, she could totally still have severed hands in there. After dealing with the snakesicle situation, there's some other things I've learned from being in a relationship. 
Apparently, there are rules and etiquettes when eating food, and my girlfriend sure does love and enforce those rules. Eh. I was taught, don't put your elbows on the table, close mm-hmm. your mouth when you're chewing unless mm-hmm. you want to talk to someone, and make sure you eat something green every once in a while. But according to her, there's more than that. Like, did you know that bagel bites aren't a part of a balanced diet? <laughs> we were at a restaurant one time, pre-COVID, and when we got our food, Gif took a napkin and put it on her lap and told me to do that as well because you're supposed to do that in a society. I looked around the restaurant and said, but no one else has a napkin on their laps. And she said, that's because you wanted to eat at a Denny's. I didn't know why she was such a stickler for table manners, until I went to her family's place for Thanksgiving, and I stepped inside and saw two sets of staircases in their house, and it all made sense. Oh, they're fancy. And collect staircases. Going to my girlfriend's <laughs> home for Thanksgiving was the first time I met a partner's parents, and I tried really, really hard to get them to like me, because I'm kissing their firstborn child. I'm in the house, dad's watching sports. I love sports, I lied. Mom's working on a puzzle. I love puzzles. They used to call me the puzzle king in high school. Her brother's playing Mario Odyssey. I love Mario. Oh, wait, I don't have to impress you. You stuck at this game. In an effort to get them to like me more, I brought a gift for Gift's family. I got them a little baby cactus because it's small and prickly and doesn't like to be touched. (laughs) Just like her. (laughs) Ooh, ow, babe. No, no, babe. It was a joke. It was a joke. (laughs) Gift's Thanksgiving meal was the polar opposite of my family's Thanksgiving. My family does Thanksgiving with two other families and they all come together with mashed potatoes and everyone gets in a line with paper plates and we all have one big mashed potato potluck. Oh my God. That's my family. We don't have like uh, like all bunch of whole other families. Instead, it's like the entire brood of my, of my family, uh, which is, okay. There's my dad, uh, his two brothers, uh, theirs, uh, and their younger sister. And all of their grandkids, are all, and all of their kids, and then their kids' kids, and then there's me. I am the, oh god, I'm reminded of this, I'm the only one in my generation uh, that, you know, is in my generation that does not have a kid. That will, other than medical reasons as to why the others cannot, but I'm the only one that does not have a kid. And I'm reminded of that every time, and I'm just like, Buh! Yeah, so, it's it's a whole thing. But every Thanksgiving, uh, I remember last year's Thanksgiving, uh, my grandmother had this whole thing set up because of COVID and everything. She had the tables, like, all organized. And, you know, one at a time came up, she would make you a tray, and then she'd hand it to you, and then boom. It was, it was like a lunch, it was like almost like a lunch line back in, back in school. It was, it was nice, it was very nice. Uh, this year, uh, for, uh, 4th of July, we're hoping to have the, how, how it used to be, but I guess it remains to be seen. We'll just, we'll just have to see. Then I sit at the kids' table to avoid talking about politics. Gifts family used... (laughs) Okay, okay. I can't avoid talking about it because my family always asks me, they're just like, Nate, you make videos online, you must talk about politics. I'm just like, uh... I'm a member of the Motor Party. Motor Party? Middle of the road. Uh, (laughs) M-O-T-R. And before you call me a fence sitter, I'll say this. Sit on it and rotate. Um, Anyway. (laughs) I'm just sick and tired of the divide. I mean, I've got some family members that are hard left-leaning, and i got some family members that are hard right-leaning. Not, like, super hard, like... Anyway, they... (laughs) i got some that just couldn't... That just... Again families they're complex and me i try to play mediator i try to play mediator and i'm just like okay well here's the thing you need to understand this side of the view and then all of a sudden this person's like well what about this over here and i'm like okay okay calm down let's talk about this so this here this here and this here and what you're talking about is actually completely different from what they were talking about earlier and they're like oh okay well so and so should have won the election last year i'm like oh god here we go so yeah and (laughs) Bunch of hardline, hardline Republicans and Dixiecrats. That's that's all what my family is. Real plates and had candles and everyone puts a napkin on their lap. I felt wow. like Shrek at Fiona's castle. They had three forks of various sizes, but I still wanted them to like me. So I wasn't about to point out that it made no sense to use three different forks to eat a meal. This must be why <sighs> Gif is so afraid of knives. 
All these cutlery options are bringing up childhood traumas of going up all the stairs. <laughs> but Gift's family was so fancy that I actually didn't even meet them on Thanksgiving. <clears throat> My memory just filled in that we were having a Thanksgiving meal. Gift read this script and was like, you know you didn't meet them on Thanksgiving, right? That was just a regular Tuesday brunch. That wasn't even a meal to be thankful for? Why do we talk about politics so much? One of the big political debates we have is that Gift tells me I wear dad socks. But I don't think she understands my genius. You see, if I buy and wear the same pair of socks for the rest of my life, I'll never have to worry about matching socks ever again. So I've already picked out the socks that I'm going to be wearing at my funeral. And as we were wrapping up our <laughs> non-thankful meal, I got up from the table and Gift's dad said, Hey, I have those socks. So I guess she's right about some things. And her dad totally likes me now. In the end, as long as I nice. make Gif happy, then I know her parents will like me, no matter what socks I wear. And as long as you're with someone who makes you a happier person, then they're a good partner too. Even if they refuse to throw away the dead snake they've had in their freezer for almost three years. Well, hello everyone. I uh, know it's been a while, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. There were lots of things to learn in my first serious relationship, and if you have any advice for being in your first serious relationship, then let me know in the comments. I'm sure me and a bunch of other commenters will find that helpful. Fun fact, Gif and I wrote this video together, so if you didn't like it, um, that's on her. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I don't wanna end up in the freezer. Huge thanks to my amazing team for once again bringing these animated anecdotes to life. I couldn't have made this video without them. And on top of this, thank you all for supporting Cafe Chaos on Kickstarter. We sincerely appreciate all of your excitement. We have finally sent out pre-orders, and if you didn't get the chance to support the Kickstarter, you can now find all the items on my online store, link in the description. We do have some extra Kickstarter exclusives available, such as the bento box or the animated expansion pack. Be sure to grab them soon, because once they're gone, they're gone forever. Thank you again for watching this video, and make sure that you and your partner wear your masks and your seatbelt. Yeah, masks not as much anymore because, you know, you know, vaccinations and all that, which, cool. But, yeah, definitely still wear your seatbelt, kids. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, uh, oh, relationships, guys. It's, it's, this stuff's crazy. I, I don't know what to make of it half the time. But, yeah, this, this was, this was a good one. This was really, really sweet. And the fact that he wrote this with his girlfriend, Gif, which... Sweet name, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm very, I'm, I like this one. This was a very, very good video. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more from uh, the odd ones out, I, I talked a lot during this. I'm sorry, not sorry, but it is what it is. Uh, but if y'all uh, want to see more from uh, the odd ones out, feel free to click the name and the title of the video. And if you want to see more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell to stay notified, leave a like on the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I will see you then. 